there we go and uh, <clears throat> there we go Psalm 107 and uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, verse number one then we'll skip down to verse number eight and look at a couple other about three other verses there uh, but uh, uh, we'll have a word of prayer and they get right into the message uh, here tonight. Uh, let's stand to show respect to the reading of God's word. By the way, if you could, if you cannot understand, you may remain seated. But if we could, stand and show respect as we read uh, Psalm 107, and uh, beginning there in verse number 1. As I said, then we'll read verse number 8. Uh, then uh, I'll tell you where to go to uh, uh, next after that. Uh, Psalm 107, verse number 1. It says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Then verse number 8 says, uh, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And then uh, uh, looking at verse number uh, uh, 15, it says, Oh, that men would praise him for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I'm not sure what's going on back here. I think it's my, my might be my end here. Uh, I think it's going in and out. Uh, then uh, verse number 21 <coughs> It says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And then lastly, verse number 31 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I entitled the message tonight. Tom actually found out what the title of the message was early. And I normally don't give that away. I was told him I don't want to be thinking about something else. He started talking to me and I said, uh, let me keep my mind on the message right now. You can talk to me after the service about this. But uh, I entitled the message tonight, The Wonderful Works of God. The Wonderful Works of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for each one that was able to be here tonight. Lord, we do ask that your Holy Spirit would be here in this place. And Lord, that you'd help us to be attentive uh, to what you have for us. And Lord, I pray that uh, uh, your Holy Spirit would, would uh, just do a mighty work in our midst, Lord, that there would be, uh, uh, it would be evident that you are here and Lord, that uh, we've met with you. Lord, uh, I pray your Holy Spirit would uh, do his work that only he can do. And Lord, I, I pray that, uh, Lord, if there's a heart maybe that uh, just needs to uh, be uplifted, Lord, I pray that you'd use this message to uplift them. Lord, uh, maybe there's some that uh, need to be rebuked, Lord, use this message to, to rebuke. I know there's nothing in there uh, in the message necessarily specifically about rebuking, but Lord, maybe uh, uh, it is necessary that that happens. But Lord, I just pray that whatever uh, that each individual needs, Lord, speak to our hearts. Bless Let's start our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' precious name, we pray for his sake. And all of God's people said, <coughs> amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. <coughs> Excuse me. The wonderful works of God. The wonderful works of God. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, it's amazing to experience the marvelous intervening hand of God in your life. <coughs> I've seen it a number of times. It encourages me to know that God is, uh, you know, he's watching uh, what's going on in our daily lives. He's, uh, he cares about you, by the way. He loves you. And uh, if you uh, weren't aware of that, he does love you. He cares for you. Uh, he knows exactly what you're going through. You know, if you're uh, dealing with things, he knows exactly what you're dealing with. He knows uh, uh, exactly what you're struggling with. He knows uh, uh, what your thoughts are. And, and uh, even before we know what our thoughts are, he knows what they are. And God is good. And boy, I'm glad he's good. And he's merciful. I'm so glad he's a merciful God. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, But we ought to... Uh, Take time to talk about it, amen? Uh, there ought to be times that we uh, just uh, uh, stop and pause, and, and uh, like tonight, we got to hear about uh, how the Lord uh, uh, blessed, how he uh, provided new jobs, and, and uh, just how he spoke to hearts, and, and uh, you know, it's an encouraging to know that we have a God that's alive, that he's, he's well, he's working, and, and he desires to do that work in each of us. And just like you uh, uh, like to talk to someone and, and uh, you know, share good things that are going on, and, and, uh, or you like to hear somebody say, hey, uh, you know, thank you for doing this, and, and uh, we really appreciate you doing that. You know, uh, when somebody's done some good things, I appreciate, like I said, Philip, you know, uh, uh, I know he didn't do it for the pat 
on the back or, or uh, you know, for us to say, hey, thank you for making that catapult. Um, you know, I would have made something. It wouldn't have looked nothing like that. Amen. I, I would have been like, um, my wife knows this. My, I would have been, I would have made this huge thing, you know, that would have stood, you know, six feet tall or 10 feet tall. And, you know, we're launching kids. Amen. And, and uh, you know, I, I was like, man, alive, I can't uh, make something like that. I didn't have the time to do that. But, but uh, uh, anyways, God likes to hear when you say good things about him. When you give him praise, notice what it said there in verse number eight, all oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. God desires for us to uh, give praise uh, to others and, and we should tell others of God's goodness. You know what? We need to brag on the Lord and let them know, hey, we have a God that's alive. We have a God that's real. We have a God that's working. Amen? He's not dead. He's, uh, 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 I'm glad we, uh, we can call unto him and he hears us and he knows exactly what we're going through. Boy, I'm glad I have that kind of a God. Amen? And here in this chapter, we see uh, 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 the psalmist, he's in trouble, and, and uh, uh, how, uh, uh, you know, we see also how God begins to work through him, and, and by the end of the chapter, we're not looking at the entire chapter, we're just looking at about the first 30 verses there, uh, but uh, uh, looking at those, uh, hopefully uh, you and I will be able to see how God shows his marvelous, wonderful works and how we can be able to share that with others. We've got four things here tonight, and hopefully it'll be a help and encouragement to you. First of all, number one, we see a man in confusion. We see a man in confusion. You know, if you notice in verse number one and following, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and uh, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. You know, uh, uh, oftentimes when we go through things, we, we realize, oh, you know, uh, uh, I'm going through this. And, and uh, uh, you know, uh, the psalmist who's writing about the children of Israel and, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, how they were lost, kind of wandering around. And they had no lodging, uh, lodging place. Uh, uh, they had no lunch. They were hungry. Uh, remember uh, uh, they were, when they were hungry, they cried unto the Lord, oh, we're hungry. Remember that? Oh, we're thirsty. And, and what God do? Oh, you, you poor things. Oh, well, not too bad. You know, hunger and thirst. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad God didn't do that. What did God do? God provided manna for them. And man, when they got mad of manna, you know, they got sick and tired of manna. Oh, we don't like manna anymore. This is just, uh, oh, it's sickening. God gave them uh, quail and man, and he made it uh, to where it was uh, coming out their nostrils. Amen. They're like, oh, that's too much. Amen. And, uh, but you know, God took care of them every single step of the way. And uh, he even said there in verse number six there, then, uh, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. You know, even though uh, oh, we may be uh, in confusion or dealing with problems and trials and things like that, one of the things that we see here in our text is that God is able to bring them out of their confusion. He can bring you out of your confusion. Notice in verse number, uh, uh, the latter part of verse number six and uh, uh, the following verses, it says, and he delivered them out of their distresses and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with what? Goodness. I'm so glad that we have a God that cares enough about us. That he doesn't, as I said, he doesn't treat us, you know, oh, well, you, you no good, filthy, dirty, uh, rotten sinner. Uh, uh, just stay down in the, in the ditch. No, he helps us out of the ditch. And uh, he helps uh, set our feet uh, up out of the miry clay and on a solid rock. And I'm so glad that we have a God that loves us and cares enough about us uh, to be able to do that. Oh, number one, we see a man in confusion. Number one, we see a man in confusion. Number two, we see a man in confinement. We see a man in confinement. Notice in verse number uh, 10 and following. 
It says, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned uh, the uh, counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. You know, uh, uh, sin often at times does that to a sin uh, uh, almost is like a, a, a dark uh, confinement, a, a dark uh, uh, cell, if you will. And, and uh, you know, the uh, psalmist, he writes as if they're kind of like, they feel like they're on death row, you know, and, and, uh, but they're hurting and, and they feel like they're in chains. Why? Because they had rebelled against God and his word. You know, you think about this, uh, the children of Israel... They wouldn't have had to deal with wandering in the wilderness 40 years if they would have just said, okay, God said to go into the promised land and claim it, let's go. And there are a lot of Christians that are wandering around in their wilderness, and hopefully it doesn't take them 40 years to figure it out, amen. Hopefully it only takes them, you know, uh, maybe four hours, amen. That, we're wishing there, amen. <laughs> But the reality of it is that, you know, once a person realizes, hey, I've been wandering around in this wilderness and I need to stop wandering and I need to follow the Lord and, and he'll uh, uh, show me uh, uh, the right way. And, and uh, uh, you know, it says there in, in verse, number, uh, uh, verse number 12, it says, Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. You know, they were caught. Uh, they felt sentenced. You know what? Uh, could you imagine the children of Israel? wandering for 40 years they knew what the sentence was amen 40 years well i i've tried to fathom that i've tried to understand that you know uh, uh god had told there was some uh, you know those that had rebelled uh god told them hey your carcasses are going to be in the wayside and and uh, could you imagine hey we're waiting for your carcass to die so we can go to the promised land amen <laughs> I don't know about you, that'd be an awful thought, thought amen? But uh, uh, that's what they were dealing with. But you know, one of the things that, that God is able to do, I want you to notice in verse number 13 and following. It says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands and sunder. All that men would praise the Lord for his uh, goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. You know what God's able to do when man is in confinement? God's able to break the bonds. God's able to break those bonds. He's able to uh, cut them off, and, and you don't have to be in bondage to that sin. You don't have to be in bondage to uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that feeling, and, and I'm glad we have a God that is still good. Amen? I said, I'm glad we have a God that's still good. Amen? Amen. Boy, I, I thought you all were falling asleep here. Amen. <laughs> but you know, we see there uh, a man in confinement. Number one, we see a man in confusion. Number two, a man in, in confinement. Number three, we see a man in condemnation. We see a man in condemnation. Notice in verse number 17 and following. It says, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their troubles, and he saveth them out of their distresses. You know, uh, there are some people, they just... Uh, uh, like this uh, individual and like these people here, uh, 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 there are some people that have no spiritual appetite. You know, uh, uh, by the way, you and I have to have a spiritual appetite. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, I learned when uh, uh, years ago we had uh, uh, a lady up at uh, Camp Chatech that worked with horses, Mrs. Sullivan, and uh, one of the things that Mrs. Sullivan taught me was uh, how to make a, a horse drink. You know, she always, you've always heard the uh, uh, saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Amen. And uh, uh, so she said, you know what, you, can't, you, you can lead that horse to water, you can't make him drink, but you can make him thirsty enough so that he'll want to drink. And so uh, she taught us, uh, uh, what we'd do is we'd mix a little bit of salt in with the feed. You say, oh, that's awful. No, it's good. Because what it did is that, that horse would eat that, uh, uh, that food and, and uh, then it'd all of a sudden get thirsty. So when you brought them to water, they'd want to drink. Amen. 
And there are some things that God many times does in our life to try to get us thirsty uh, to hunger and thirst after righteousness, uh, to hunger and thirst after his word. And, and God desires for us to have a, a good uh, uh, spiritual appetite, but there's some that don't have that. Uh, there are some that have no desire for God and they've refused God's word and, and uh, they've uh, drawn close to death. And, and there's been some that have been in storms of life for a long time. Why? Because they're not learning what God's trying to teach them. But I want you to notice in verse number 20 and following, it says, And he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in uh, ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth a stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. You know, I'm so glad that we have a God that forgives and that heals our hearts. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? That God knows exactly what we're dealing with. And yes, we may uh, deal with some things in our heart. And, and uh, uh, we may be struggling with some things in our heart. But uh, it says there, uh, oh, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And declare his works with what? Rejoicing. You know, you can rejoice in the Lord. You know, I like that, uh, uh, that song. Oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistakes. Amen. Boy, I love that song. I'm glad that God doesn't make mistakes. He knows exactly what he's doing. We can rejoice in that. Uh, oh, uh, we see there, uh, number three, a man in condemnation. Number one, we see a man in confusion. Number two, a man in confinement. Number three, a man in condemnation. And lastly, number four, we see a man in crisis. We see a man in crisis. I want you to notice in our text there, verse number 26, so as they mount up to the heaven, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry to the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh a storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they, uh, they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven." You know, uh, we see the man in crisis, you know, uh, uh, he was conducting business as usual and, and he had seen the hand of God and then his conditions became stormy. You know, uh, uh, it kind of reminds me of our, our nation right now. You know, there was kind of a lull uh, uh, there for the last about three, three and a half years here. And, and uh, even before that, you know, the God uh, had, uh, uh, you know, given Christians uh, a lot of good things that have happened in our nation, but, but uh, there was kind of a lull. There was no uh, uh, you know, urgency of, of reaching others for Christ. There was no uh, urgency of, you know, there was no desire of people being in God's house. Boy, I tell you, uh, I, I cannot uh, tell you how much I really enjoy seeing faces, amen? More than just a few faces, amen? Boy, when we were meeting uh, with, uh, people in other rooms, boy, that was hard, Amen? There were times, that, and Brother McCoy can attest to this. I don't know how many times he and I talked. I'm like, boy, we ought to just, we ought to just, you know, just meet everybody together. Amen. I so wanted to do it during that time. But you know what? I'm glad we obeyed the Lord and still obeyed man. And, and I believe God has blessed us as a result of it. But you know what? Uh, there are some that are like that. They're, they're in that condi in a stormy condition. Uh, they're in danger. They're afraid. They're at their wit's end. And each time, if you notice in our text, each time these people cried to the Lord. Verse number 6, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Verse number 13, uh, then uh, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. And, uh, verse number 19, notice the uh, theme here, amen. Then they cried unto the Lord in their, their trouble, and he saveth them out of uh, their distresses. Verse number 28, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. You know, there are times that we can cry unto the Lord in our, our times of trouble, and I'm glad that God is able to deliver us. But have you given praise to God? Have you given praise to him? 
You know, uh, David, he, uh, over and over in the scriptures, especially in the book of Psalms, he calls on man to praise the Lord for his wonderful works. And, and uh, we're able to do that. And notice what happens in verse number 31 and 32. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. I'm glad that we can give praise to the Lord. Amen. I'm glad that we can uh, let others know, hey, we have a God that's real. Hey, we have a God that's moving. Hey, we have a God that's working. You know, uh, uh, the fact that God gave us this property out here, man alive, I cannot praise God enough for that property. Amen. The fact now that there's no house there, uh, almost all the trees are gone. We got one more tree we're going to try and get rid of. Amen. <laughs> I found out I had the wrong number, by the way, amen. That's why I kept calling. I'm like, why isn't he calling me back? It's the wrong number, amen. Found out that this morning. He was like, oh, pastor, my son's got a new number. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> he changed it because I got it. No. <laughs> but you think about this. You think about all the things that God has done for our church just this year. Just in 2020, there's the new parking lot that's been paved. The old parking lot got resealed. The nursery got remodeled. The, uh, uh, there, were, there have been people that have joined. I think we've had, uh, let me see here, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, right off the top of my head, I think it's around 15 or 16 people that have joined just since March. That is amazing. Amen? It's not us, though. It's him. He gets all the glory for it. And that's where we ought to say, hey, we have a God that's alive, that's working. Amen? Amen. Well, let me ask you this. What have you done to praise and thank God for his wonderful works? You think about all the things that God has done. I'm just going to mention a few. God's preserved his word. Boy, that is awesome. You know, we don't have to get it from somebody else. You know, we don't have to get some long scroll out and roll it out. Well, what, that, what did that say there? I don't know. Boy, I can't really tell if that's an A or an E. Uh, but, you know, hey, it might be uh, this. I'm glad we don't have to worry about that. Amen. I'm glad we have God's written word. By the way, we have uh, the ability to be able to have it on our phones. You know, uh, uh, somebody was talking to me. Oh, his brother, uh, Brother West. He said, you know, Pastor, he said, you challenged us to read our Bible. And he said, I, I didn't even think about all the technology that we have. And he said, I've been able to use that technology. He said, I was always thinking inside the box. And he said, you help me think outside the box. Boy, praise the Lord for that. You think about this. You think about his love for us. Boy, you know, the Bible tells us for God's soul, what? Love the world. He loved you. And he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, that's a lot of love. Amen? Amen. How about his, his uh, work of inspiration? You know, he inspired some men. Had some, uh, uh, somebody text me recently. They said, hey, pastor, I saw this on a dollar bill. What is this? I said, that's a bunch of garbage. Stay away from it. Amen. I just had, had uh, uh, some uh, uh, things on it. And, and uh, what it was trying to do is discredit uh, Jesus and discredit the Bible. But you know, we have a great, uh, a great God that inspired men. And, and then we have his work of salvation. Boy, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad he's saved. Aren't, aren't you glad you're saved tonight? Yeah. Boy, I tell you, I'm glad he did that work. We didn't have to do anything. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for, the, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You know, I hope each of you would reflect upon the goodness of the Lord and his wonderful works in your life. And then I want to challenge you. Would you be willing to tell somebody about it? It's not always easy. Amen. You know, sometimes it's embarrassing. You know, I, uh, uh, when... Uh, Excuse me, when I lead somebody to the Lord, I try to get them to tell somebody else, hey, what'd you just do? I got saved. Hey, why don't you tell brother so-and-so? Hey, tell them what just happened to you. Amen? Hey, hey, brother, sister, so-and-so, come over here. Hey, he's got something to tell you, or she's got something to tell you. Amen? 
You and I need to be willing to tell somebody else about what God's doing as well. Let me ask you this. When's the last time you told somebody about the goodness of God? When's the last time you told them about the wonderful works that He's been doing in your life? Well, it's easy to complain about what's going on and uh, you know, we may get upset about things. And, but you know, when's the last time you just gave praise to the Lord and then told somebody about God and His goodness to you? I want to challenge you, if you haven't done so lately, I want to encourage you to tell somebody Give praise to the Lord. He deserves it. Amen. He really does. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. The wonderful works of God. Tonight's message, I, I didn't uh, have the plan of salvation. I mentioned about salvation. But I didn't really talk about it much. The plan of salvation is simply this, or the gospel is simply this, that Jesus Christ came to this earth to die on the cross. He was buried and he rose again to give new life. And if you've never heard about Jesus and what he did for you, or maybe you've heard about him but just didn't know uh, that he did that for you, my dear friend, I want to invite you tonight if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'd like the privilege to pray for you. And if you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Hallett, would you pray for me? I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. But I would like the privilege to pray for you. If you're like that here tonight, you'd say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. I, I know of Jesus. I know what he did. But I've never trusted him as my personal Lord and Savior. I've never invited him into my heart. In this prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. I don't believe there's ever been a time that I invited Christ into my heart. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody like that here tonight? The other question then is this. If you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Well, would you pray for me that I would praise the Lord more. I, I, I guess thinking about it, I really haven't been praising God a whole lot like I probably should or haven't taken opportunities that God's given to me to, to uh, uh, praise the Lord to others. Pastor, would you pray that I just have the boldness to do that? Would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you and thank you. There are hands all over this auditorium here tonight. Yes, thank you. I see that one and this one and this one over here and this one over here. Thank you. Let me slip them down. Pastor, I didn't raise my hand a moment ago, but God spoke to my heart. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody else like that here tonight? Pastor, pray for me. God spoke to my heart. Would you pray for me? In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to encourage you. Maybe just come and talk to the Lord. Maybe just give him praise tonight. Maybe you just need to say, Lord, would you help me to give you praise? When you, when you give me those opportunities, would you help me to praise you for your goodness and your wonderful works to the children of men? Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless now this invitation time, Lord. I pray you'll be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.